Hi, my name is Roger and welcome. In this video, I will show you how, where and why you should use a compressor when mixing. Have you also thought about all those compressors, all those famous compressors that everyone is talking about? LA-2As, 1176s and so on. Where should you use them? Well, I will show you where I use them in this video. In my opinion, compression is used for three reasons. One is to even out the levels, one is to shape transients, and one is to create a sound. I have a song set up here. It's the Roger That Song of 2021. There's no compression on this. I've treated the tracks a little bit with EQ and reverb, but no compression. So let's listen and think, where do we need compression? Why do we need compression? So where do we need compression? What do you think? Well, I think I need to level out the bass a little bit to make it steady. I need to level out the vocal a little bit so it can stay on top of the mix all the time. And I want some more aggressive drums, more punchy drums, and I can use compression for that. That is the most important thing. Think about where and why you should use a compressor. Don't use it on every track. I've had students that done that and it's like everything is sounding, but nothing is heard. So if someone have told you that you should always use a compressor on this or that, that's not a reason. It's your taste, your taste only. Where do you need it? I want to compress the drums a little bit. So let's start there. Start with a kick. Without compression, it sounds like this. And with some compression. I have a slow attack to let the transients through, a fairly quick release of so the compressor lets go, but I think it's too much. So I will use this mix knob to make this compressor a parallel compressor. So I will start with the dry signal and then I will blend the compressed signal in. About 50% sounds good. So I have 50% dry signal, 50% compressed signal. How about the snare? Without compression. And with nearly the same settings as with the bass drum, rather slow attack at 50 milliseconds, fairly fast release at 32 milliseconds. That is fine. We can use a parallel compressor on the snare drum as well. I have a parallel bus set up here. Just make an aux send and send in unit again. And on that aux you put a compressor. Then the snare drum will send signal to that fader you have in your door. And you can automate that more easily than with a mix knob. And here I have a totally different kind of compression. I have a fast attack, so the transients won't go through, and a rather slow release. So the snare drum feels a bit mushy, but blended in with the original snare drum, it sounds like this. I will start dry and then I will blend this signal in. You get a slightly more beefy snare drum sound, a slightly more aggressive snare drum sound. Let's listen to the drums by themselves with the compression we have done. A little bit more punch, but I want something more. So let's go to the room mics. Let's listen to them without compression first. Okay, recorded, but very gentle, very clean. So let's get some aggression into this. That's more like it. Now the drums in total sounds like this. That is much better in my opinion, but I have another trick and that is to use a compressor for all my drums. I send all my drums to a drum bus 
and then I make an aux from that with a parallel compressor on that aux. Uh, let's listen to that parallel bus. Without any compression, it sounds like the drums. And then I will use this bad boy and compress a lot. Totally unusable by itself, but let's blend that in with the original drums. Now we're talking. We have compressed some drums, so let's listen to the whole song. Wonderful. Let's level out the bass a little bit. I will go quickly here. The bass without compression sounds like this. And with compression. Medium attack, medium release. Medium attack to let a little bit of the fingers through. And the vocal, it was already compressed when I recorded it a little bit, but I think I need to even out the levels a tiny bit more to make it sit on top of the mix without compression. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all. With compression. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all. Here I use a rather fast attack and a rather fast release to just get the grip of the vocal so that it can sit on top. Let's listen to the whole song now. Maybe the drums are a tiny bit too loud because when you do parallel compression you also introduce level so you have to adjust all your faders or the drum bus fader to compensate for the parallel compression fader. So how about all those famous compressors that everyone is talking about? Where should you use them? This is the kind of information I would have wanted when I started out. There was no internet at that time. But I've heard about all those 1176s, LA-2As, Fairchilds, but I never saw one. I never knew how to use them. And then they came in hardware form or plug-in form or whatever, and I didn't know where to start. This could be a starting point for you. Let's start with the famous 1176. This is for me a grabby compressor. It grabs the signal totally and it has sharp edges. So it could shape transients really good. Therefore, I would normally use it on drums, like a snare drum. or vocals, especially lead vocals, to grab it and push it forward in the mix. Is that I don't know enough at all Everywhere I go Another famous compressor is the LA-2A. This is a very smooth compressor with a very slow attack and a very slow release. It's gentle, but it has some distortion in the low mid, which makes it warm. I hate that word, but you know what I mean. I normally use it on background vocals, or in this case, bass. LA3A, another famous compressor. It's a totally different compressor, but I think that it lands in between, in the middle of an LA-2A and an 1176. So I won't show you this here. It has a little bit more attack than an LA-2A, but is smoother than an 1176. I use it mainly for things like acoustic instruments, guitar, mandolin, and things like that. Another one is the DBX-160. And this is a very strange compressor because it can't handle loud signals. The compressor collapses a bit because the input circuit can't handle the transients. And we have gotten familiar with that sound and we can use that to our 
advantage, for example, on drums. So this is a DBX 160 style compressor on the kick drum. I have a love-hate relationship with fashion compressors. I don't use them much, I think they're too slow, too clumsy, but sometimes I use them. For example, a ballad piano to smooth the piano out, or like in this case, on overheads, because I want to move the snare drum back in the sound field. We have the famous, or should I say infamous, SSL bus compressor. You've heard this compressor on gazillions of records. This is, was the centerpiece of an SSL console and engineers were mixing through that compressor when mixing records. Nowadays we have more options for the mix bus. I don't use the SSL bus compressor on my mix bus often. If I want an aggressive compressor, I use it because I think it's rather aggressive sounding rather hard, rather edgy. Sometimes I use it on my drum bass though. And the last compressor in this famous compressor walkthrough is also the newest of the bunch. This is the Distressor from Empirical Labs. This is also very aggressive but in a totally different way. It's much smoother, it has a lot of distortion, it also has a warmth setting, which has, which has nothing to do with warmth. It's a high frequency limiter, which dullens the sound a little bit, but you can use that to your advantage. I use this when I want a lot of compression that is smooth, distorted, and not edgy, like room mics on drums. What's the conclusion here? Well, it's to use compression where it's needed and not where it's not needed. And only you can decide that. It's your opinion, it's your ears, it's your song, it's your audio. Hopefully this video can give a little bit of help to make your decisions easier when you want compression, why you want compression, where you want compression, and what compression you want to use. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. I will answer every question I get. If I get a lot of questions in the same subject, I will do another video about it. Famous in Swedish is Shend. Shend. <laughs> Until next time, Roger that.